everyone, and welcome to Season 6, Episode 47 of Pro Wrestling's Top 50. I'm your host, Travis McNeil, and today we continue our countdown of the Top 50 matches of 2021 with match number 4 on our list, which is the match between CM Punk and Darby Allin from the AEW All Out event held on September the 5th of 2021. So I've kind of been promising it uh, since, you know, I, I did the Lucha Brothers and, and Young Bucks video a couple days ago. Um, All Out 2021 is, for my money, maybe the best wrestling pay-per-view of all time. Uh, it's certainly up there with your WrestleMania 17, your Great America Bash 1989, and anything else that you could justify as, you know, being the top dog when it comes to value for your money pay-per-views. Um, this was a show that had incredible buzz coming into it. You had the big CM Punk return to wrestling with this match. You had the amazing cage match that we've already talked about. Um, you had just solid matches top to bottom all throughout this card. Uh, you had a Battle Royal, which AEW Battle Royals, let's be honest, they, they normally aren't that great. Uh, Battle Royals in general could be, could be tough. Um, but you had a Battle Royal that was entertaining that had, you know, the big Ruby Riot debut. Um, you had the amazing double debut at the end with the Adam Cole, you know, leading into the Brian Danielson. Uh, you know, return, you had Minoru Suzuki's surprise appearance. You had Eddie Kingston and Miro starting off the show hot. Um, this show delivered through and through. Um, everything on it was good or satisfying. It was full of big moments. It was a big crowd. It was a hot crowd. Uh, this show came at a time when it felt like wrestling really needed it. Um, I will never forget watching this pay-per-view live. Um, it was that good, and I will always fondly look back and remember it as such. And it's funny because coming out of that pay-per-view, um, and I, I mentioned it in the video, uh, Young Bucks and Lucha Brothers in the Cage is possibly, you know, one of my favorite matches of all time. Um, just the way it, it made me feel, the moments in it. Uh, I unconditionally love that match and I will watch it another 50 to 100 times throughout the remainder of my life, I'm sure. Um, that said, when re-watching matches for this project, um, this was the one that really, truly blew me away with just how good it was and how layered it was, which I really didn't get on the initial viewing of it. And don't get me wrong, I really liked this match when I watched it the first time. Um, but this match came with this overall anxiety for me. Um, CM Punk one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. CM Punk, to me, one of the most important professional wrestlers of all time because he was really, you know, the first guy from the big indie boom in the early 2000s that went into the mainstream, uh, you know, the WWE, and really didn't have to change himself. So, you know, up until that point, we'd see guys you know, come in uh, sporadically, you know, from the independence that, you know, would really be crafted into that WWE style. But Punk came in, he was unapologetic, he kept the CM Punk name, he kept everything about him that made him cool as CM Punk, you know, as the impressionable teenage independent wrestling fans that I was, you know, and, and that I'm sure a lot of you were as well at the time. Uh, so it was really cool and it really opened the door, I think, much like how Chris Jericho and Eddie Guerrero and, you know, Benoit um, really opened the door for smaller wrestlers, you know, through the, the 2000s onward to become the main eventers that we see them as now. Um, you know, Punk was really that in-between guy where he was able to excel because of those names I just mentioned. But, you know, the Seth Rollins is... Um, and the Finn Balors and, you know, everybody else that have really come since, I feel, you know, a, a debt of gratitude for Punk for being able to, to really open that door for him. Even Brian Danielson, um, you know, maybe the best wrestler of all time. Uh, but I feel that if Punk didn't get that WWE contract and do what he did first, I don't even know if there would have been an opportunity for a guy like Daniel Bryan to, to really succeed the way he did. Uh, so Punk is incredibly, incredibly important to, to pro wrestling history, whether you want to accept that or not. Um, so when I first started dating my my now wife, but when I first started dating her, it was in 2011. And it was uh, right around like WrestleMania 2011 time. 
And throughout the summer, when things were, you know, starting to, to really pick up between us, uh, was, you know, the, the summer of punk, right? And I actually remember leaving Money in the Bank, where he would ultimately win the title halfway through the show, um, you know, to, to go and see her, um, and then having to watch, you know, Money in the Bank afterwards. So that's always kind of been a, a funny story in our relationship, where I'm like, I left punk winning the belt at Money in the Bank to come see you. Um, but because of that, you know, she, CM Punk is, is one of the wrestlers that she knows she hates wrestling. Um, but when I was watching All Out Live, I said to her, like, oh, do you want to see Punk come back? She watched Punk's UFC fights with me and, and whatnot. Uh, so she watched it. And when this match was done, she was like, oh, that kind of sucked. Um, and I, I certainly didn't think it sucked. I thought it was a great match. Uh, but for her, it was like, you know, it's kind of basic. She likes, um, you know, her, her favorite match of all time, not that she's seen a lot of wrestling matches, is John Cena and Brock Lesnar from when Brock came back right away at Extreme Rules. She loved, like, the physicality in it and, and how it, Brock just felt, like, completely crazy and it was unpredictable and you didn't know what would happen. And she didn't really get the sense from this match. So it didn't work from her. And for me at the time, like, I sat watching this match just with, like, a knot in my stomach of, like, hoping and praying that Punk would do okay, that he wouldn't have all of this built up ring rust, that he wouldn't botch anything, that, you know, if this match would just, they could get through it, you know, the best that they could. So I had all of this anxiety built up watching this, and I feel like because of that, I didn't really get to truly enjoy it as much as I could have. Um, but I knew that I liked it. Um, put it, you know, on my, my short list of 107 matches to, to rewatch for this project. And when I watched it the second time, it just, it captivated me. And I picked up on so many of these things that are, are so smart to this match. And this match is not long. It doesn't, you know, overstay its welcome. It's, it's short, it's compact. Um, it, it's funny because, you know, looking at, I looked at the cage match profile for the show to make sure I had the date right and everything like that for this description on the video. And it, it shows Dave Meltzer's ratings. And this was one of the, the lower rated matches for the night. Um, you know, he gave almost everything on the card four stars plus. And this, I think he gave three and three quarters. So, you know, you get hung up on, on Meltzer ratings. Uh, but watching this back, this is by far the best match on the show. It, it's amazing. Um, and, you know, the, there was a lot of talk at the time from myself included, you know, if you're a, a longer or form fan, you know, the first spot in this match, you get the lock up and Darby Allen hits an arm drag and Brett, er, Brett er, it's CM Punk uh, sits, you know, on his butt on the mat and kind of does a little, like th just this little like head nod, you know, just basically like this facial expression where he shows like, hmm, okay. Okay, that's what this kid's gonna bring. Okay, maybe he he's good. Um, and that, you know, was this famous spot for so many people my age, you know, that grew up as a wrestling fan. You know, the Bret Hart and one, two, three kid match on Monday Night Raw, uh, you know, is is one of the best matches of our childhood. And that's, you know, that's burned into our brain. And you know, I, I talk a lot, as does everybody, about like the little things in pro wrestling. But just that little, that little facial expression, that little head tilt, that little acknowledgement, that did more to sell the one, two, three kid to any fan watching that match than anything else could have in that match. Because immediately you had Bret Hart, you know, considered the, the you know, best wrestler in the world at that point, uh, you know, get one up at the start of a match by a young kid that's coming out guns a blazing with something to prove. And that told Brett, like, this isn't going to be the cakewalk you might expect it to be. And that's exactly what they did here. And it's so funny recording this video now because there's been all of this talk, you know, to the point that it's been referenced in AEW in-ring promos of, like, these Bret Hart cosplay matches that, you know, Punk and FTR and the, these guys are really doing with all of these old-school Bret Hart spots. Um, and, you know, that's what this was. Uh, but it worked perfectly. Um, and I remember seeing it, I, you know, immediately got the reference because like I said, that's, that is imagery that I will never forget. Um, and just to, to see it here, it, it was so genius. Um, but what I didn't pick up on initially when I watched this match live that I really got on the rewatch is after that moment, you know, CM Punk is, is coming back from this big leap. CM Punk hasn't been on the independence at this point for 15 plus years, 16 years. Um, you know, CM Punk has, like it or not, really been adapted through that WWE system. You know, he 
he came from the independents, but he still went through OVW. You know, he got developed into a TV wrestler. So his offensive run that he goes on, it, it just I, I love this because when CM Punk came from the Indies into the WWE, it was, wow, he's small, right? And he would be a guy that, you know, was now in the land of giants. And we would see him wrestle, you know, especially early on in his, his career, you know, when he got called up from ECW, he'd wrestle guys like Batista and JBL and all of these guys that were much, much bigger than him. Uh, and, you know, he, he, he would get steamrolled by these guys. So the offense of, you know, that, that Punk goes to early on is he goes for this big shoulder block and he just bulldozes the much smaller Darby Allen. And it was just like this crazy thing to me to be like, Darby Allen right now is what Punk was when he came to the WWE. And Punk, as tough as this might be for him to admit, you know, he is a WWE wrestler at, at this point, right? And that's, again, something that's been explored a little bit since then, you know, with, with promos from Hangman Adam Page and stuff on AEW television throughout 2022. Um, but, like, it was, again, just these little things. And so, you know, Darby goes to a hammer lock, and he proceeds to out-wrestle CM Punk a little bit. And, like, Punk really struggles to get out of this hammer lock. And, you know, while he's trying to do it, he gets schoolboyed for a quick one count, and Punk kind of goes on this weird defensive where he has to like hit a big back elbow, a body slam, like the most basic, you know, <laughs> WWE style wrestling move that you could do. And he grabs a headlock, right? Like what is more WWE TV wrestling than a headlock or a chin lock? And like, I just, I was so captivated by it watching this back of like Punk, you know, being back where the wrestling is and not being able to hang. How many times in an AEW match or in an independent match do you see guys string in and out of hammer locks and all of these fancy counters to moves? But Punk couldn't get out of that hammer lock, almost got quickly pinned and rolled up, and then had to go to this basic, basic offense because that's all he knows at this point. And it just, it establishes this amazing story throughout this match of Punk kind of having to return back to form and also really having to heavily rely on his in-ring IQ and his experience because that's all he has in this match. He's more physically limited than his opponent. He's, you know, been in this WWE system for so long and then this big layoff that he has to break from. And, you know, he would go on to do that. And that's something if you watch his matches now, you're progressively seeing more and more of the, you know, old CM Punk coming out. But this being his first match back, you know, it, you really started to see the foundation laid for that story um, throughout this, this whole match. Um, and Darby Allen is the perfect, perfect foil here. I mentioned that, you know, Darby Allen um, is one of the most compelling, you know, pro wrestlers there is from an in-ring standpoint. He wrestles just so differently than everybody. He uses his body in just the craziest ways. And he's someone that, like, I can't look away from when I watch him. And I knew that from... The, the first match I ever saw him against, against Ethan Page, where he got squashed and evolved and he got thrown into this big post WrestleMania weekend. Like, I knew that this was more than just a squash match and that this was a dude that we were going to see everywhere. Um, and he, he's so good here, um, you know, just using his full body for his offense as he does so well because they've established, like, CM Punk is this big, you know, WWE wrestler, even though he's still a small guy. Um, and Darby really has to fight within that and use this crazy offense um, because Punk is not prepared for that and he's not adapted to that. And throughout this match, you see Darby do so many roll-ups and get so many close calls. And Punk kind of gets thrown into this, this crazy mode of like, you know, having to try to string together whatever he can. And really early on, um, you know, they kind of go through just like your standard like drop down leapfrog spot. And Punk almost grabs the GTS and Darby like immediately bails. And that sets up his side of the story of being like, you know, Darby's got all of this crazy high octane offense. But he's in there now with, you know, one of the, the most veteran wrestlers that he's ever wrestled. And if he gets caught, you know, all it's going to take is one knee to the face. And it's going to put him away. So, you know, you have Punk knowing, like, I've got to hit my finish because I don't know what else I could do against this guy. Because he's running circles around me. And you have Darby being like, I have to keep doing what I'm doing because it's working. But I can't get caught. 
And it just, it, it leads to this um, amazing just story within the 13 or 14 minutes that this match goes. Um, and it's full of just big bumps to you. Darby Allen takes an Irish whip into the buckles and he proceeds to like basically fly perpendicular to the ring post in between two of the buckles basically cross body the ring post and take this wild bump to the floor it was crazy um it gave punk an opening to really slow the pace down and use all of this deliberate back work um but again you know darby eventually gets a counter and starts to, to run wild and hit all of his signature offense hit the diamond dust hit you know the the spring back kind of like coffin drop body block off the ropes um, hit the code red and, and start busting out all of these roll-ups and Punk the whole time is just desperately trying to grab the go to sleep wherever he can do it um, and it, it leads to a moment you know and I, I talk a lot about you know face versus face matches and how there's always you know just this small little thing that kind of sort of makes one lean a little bit heel and how you kind of have to have that mat you know in a match to really develop the story if you're doing face versus face and there's that moment here where Darby goes up for the coffin drop and Punk just you know shoots his legs out from underneath him and crotches him on the the turnbuckle and it's one of those moments where like technically you just use the ring to his advantage. But, like, just had that underlying bit of desperation of being like, oh, Punk had to go that route because, you know, Darby was out wrestling him. Um, and it leads to this, again, just these, these great little things that both of these guys do so well where Punk takes, like, a moment just to catch his breath. And, again, really sell that, like, he's getting outworked, that he hasn't been in the ring in so long, and that he has a lot of catching up to do against somebody like Darby Allen. Um, we get like more just counters and, and roll-ups and things like that. Um, and it leads to this moment where Darby gets jackknife pin and Punk bridges up out of it and again finds his opportunity. And rather than turn that thing into a backslide like we've seen a hundred times, he actually turns it into a flash, go to sleep. And Darby Allen again, the bump master, takes this great bump where he falls back between the ropes straight out to the floor onto his head. Um, and again, the little things in this match that contribute to the story is CM Punk, you know, we had the Brett moment at the start where he's like, man, this, this kid's good. And like a minute, minute for a tough one here. We had the crotch on the buckles, but again, just another little thing. Rather than go out, Punk just sits on the mat and he catches his breath and he wants the count out. And again, just like the, the head nod, the check at the start, you know, the, the one, two, three kid spot. Just Punk being like, count him out, does so much to put over Darby Allen that Punk is willing, you know, in his return match, you know, on the, the grand stage, his first match in, you know, however long he had been out at that point, you know, six, seven years, whatever it was, you know, that this guy was willing to take a count out win <laughs> because, you know, he knew that that was maybe only one of the ways that he was going to get the victory. Um, Darby just beats the count. Um, Punk finally, for the first time in this match, starts to go on a little bit of a run of his signature offense. He gets the Shining Wizard in the corner into the short arm clothesline. Kind of starting to feel himself a little bit, maybe getting his mojo back a little bit. You know, he does the, the go to sleep taunt, you know, that the crowd wants to see. Um, but Darby just elbows out of that go to sleep. Um, hits just an amazing tope, again, throwing his full body at Punk. Hits a big somersault dive to the floor, and, but makes, you know, one little mistake. And, you know, Darby at this point had his run. He had everything going right, but he's young, right? Just like with his crazy crash course offense that could lead to Punk finding these openings, he makes a mistake and he too tries to do the go-to-sleep taunt, uh, maybe to rub a little bit of salt into the, the wounds of Punk. Uh, and it leads to this phenomenal point where uh, it's the best spot of the match, where and they time it so well because it really could have went badly. Where CM Punk does the Undertaker sit up as Darby just crashes right behind his back for the coffin drop, and again just this great moment of Punk just laughing, being like, "I'm smart, you're young and stupid," and he can no you know suit get those expressions out that Darby rolls him back up into a crucifix for two, and Punk rolls that back in to a, a go to sleep attempt. And uh, Art Allen transitions that into the Last Supper for two. Um, and it, again, it's just this great sequence that one looks great, all of these counters, like it's a Will Ospreay and Shingo match. 
but every part of it works to this story. You had Darby Allen's youthful exuberance, you know, almost costing him. But then Punk, you know, not being prepared for how quick this young guy is trying to take that moment to relish in his in-ring IQ. Almost paying for it, but then almost getting the GTS, which he knows is his only ticket to win here. And almost getting rolled up once again. And it leads to Punk having to cut off this sequence by hitting just this old school... 2002 CM Punk, you know, back leg lariat. And that brings our story here full circle. This is exactly what they were trying to establish, that CM Punk at this point had to turn back the clock, become the CM Punk of old to be able to hang with Darby Allen. And it leads to, you know, a, a beat later, Darby Allen, you know, um, blocking a charge in the counter, trying to come over the top, getting caught with the GTS and put away. CM Punk proved that he has it in him to still perform at a high level, to perform with the young guns that are currently out there, that Darby Allen is one of the most explosive, great wrestlers that there is right now, but he still has a little bit to learn to work a veteran like Punk, and you could not ask for more out of a return match where everybody comes out of it looking all the better. This match is an absolute home run as far as accomplishing everything it's set out to accomplish it is one of the most compelling in-match stories that there was in all of wrestling for 2021. It is a perfect match. Darby Allen it was the perfect choice and perfect opponent for Punk's return. Punk was amazing, did business exactly like how it should have been done here, and did so much to elevate Darby Allen even in the loss. Um, you get a great, you know, post-match code of honor, which was a great little callback to Punk's Ring of Honor history with the handshake. Sting comes out just for this really cool moment where, you know, Punk's a guy that grew up, you know, looking up to Sting. Sting's relationship with the WWE never really kind of flushed out, I think, the way anybody wanted it to. So they were never able to cross paths. So it was just a cool, like, kind of generational, you know, thing there. Um, and that's something that AEW does so well with these cool moments that they don't really need to beat you over the head with. They're just cool. Um, man, I'm so happy that, that Punk is back. His actual return is one of the best wrestling moments ever for me personally. Um, this match is amazing. Uh, I feel like if you watched it live and you haven't revisited it, go back and watch it. Um, knowing that Punk is, is back, you know, he actually is the AEW world champion at the time of me recording this video, although he's now out with an injury, you know, that's a whole thing. Um, but, you know, it, it just, you know, watching it now with fresh eyes, you really, really pick up on the work that they put in to create this captivating story that I personally wasn't able to fully appreciate when I watched it live that I am now. This match is a masterpiece. It is the best match on one of the best pay-per-views of all time. Um, and I, I love it. Hat goes off to both of these guys. Um, with AEW, you can watch this on Fight TV if you're outside the U.S. If you're in the U.S., you can watch it on Bleacher Report. It is also available on DVD through shopaew.com. And I'm sure at some point we will see it streaming through some sort of an AEW on-demand service. You can subscribe to my channel here on YouTube so that you never miss a video. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Wrestling50. And please join me again next time as we continue to count down Pro Wrestling's Top 50.